definitely, we definitely hit our limit. mission accomplished we're on our way down make sure you guys are tuning in and if you're here at uh, gamescom swing by the booth and maybe you'll walk away with one of these goodies Welcome to the 2022 Gamescom Awards Show live on IGN. I'm Damon Hatfield. I'm joined by Brian Altano and Max Scoville. We did it. We're here. We're in Germany. We're going to give out awards today. This is amazing. We're going to give out our first award right now. Best Boys of Gamescom. We did it. Is it right us? here? It's us. Congratulations. Oh, exciting. Beautiful. There are tons of awesome games right here at Gamescom. Now it's time to hand out some awards to the best of the best. It's not just games either. We'll also be announcing the best booth and giving out the Gamescom Heart of Gaming Award. The Gamescom Award winners are all handpicked by a panel of judges selected by Gamescom who come from all across the games industry. We'll be chatting with all of the Gamescom Award recipients right here in the studio, but the actual honor of announcing the winners, that's all happening out on this stage. How is it going, Stella and Leone? Woo! My goodness, thank you so much for asking. It is absolute mayhem out here. Everyone is so excited. Are y'all enjoying Gamescom? Yeah! So it's going great out here. Now let's go ahead and start with the first award we have here. Best Action Adventure Game nominees. We have Lies of P, Outcast 2, A New Beginning, and The Last Case of Benedict Fox. Oh my god, these are amazing picks, and I'm glad I don't have to make that choice, but I can announce who it is. So we'll find out. <laughs> the Best Action Adventure Game Award goes to Life of P! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Guys, come on over here, accept your award. Here you go, well deserved, well deserved. Do you have some things that you want to say? Yes, I want to say that I don't have to do this, I don't have to do this, I don't have to do this, I thank you so much. I'm pretty overwhelmed by the level of support we received and the interest in our game, but very thankful for everything. Thank you so much. Now you have the time to be more specific with the guys in the studio. Back to you. Liza P is the steampunk Souls-like based on Pinocchio, which looks very cool. We've known about it for some time, and the awesome showing at opening Night Live only got people more excited. We're going to have G1 Chi right on here to accept the award in just a moment, winning for best action game, best action adventure game, Liza P. That's right. Here they come here they right come. now. Wait oh a my minute. goodness. What? What is happening here? This is highly this is, this was not irregular. Uh, congratulations to both of you. This is terrifying, as <gasps> I assume the game will be. There they are, the big reveal. Oh, yeah, there should be a microphone. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Perfect, perfect. Uh, congratulations, Liza V. It's, it's kind of sort of been uh, the big breakaway hit of Gamescom this year. How does that feel? Gamescom is a lot Oh. 정말 영광스럽고 정말 감사의 말씀 드리고 그냥 더 열심히 하라는 팬들의 뜨거운 채찍질이라고 생각합니다. Yeah, he's kind of overwhelmed, but he's extremely honored by everything that's going on, and it just drives him to try even harder going forward and do a better job. How excited are you for fans to finally play this game when it comes out? It seems like people are, are really, really anticipating it here. It's one of the biggest games of the show. 이제 팬들이 그 라이즈비 처음 하는 건데요. 뭐 어떠세요? Yeah, so he's like, he thinks all of the hard work that his development team has put into this is well worth it. And again, it drives them to work even harder. And he wanted to give special thanks to the development team for all the effort that they put into this point. Cool. There are a lot of, you know, Souls-like games out there, but this one looks really unique. What, what was the original sort of idea for this game? Yeah, Souls-like game, but the concept of Rise of concept how did you get it? 네, 저희들이 가장 먼저 유저들에게 관심을 가지기 위해서 되게 잘 알려진 이야기를 선택하는 게 되게 중요했고 그래서 저희들이 여러 가지 어, 이야기 중에 어, 피노키오의 이야기를 선택을 하게 됐고 그것을 새로운 이야기로 만들어서 유저들에게 관심을 가지게 하는 게 저희들의 가장 큰 개발 전략이었던 것 같습니다. 
So they're saying that he's saying that his biggest strategy was choosing a story that pretty much everyone knows, just to and make it easier, like entry to barrier to figure to learn more about it, and then put his own really original twist on it, mm. and create something brand new and unique at the same time. Cool. How difficult is your game going to be? Are you going <laughs> to kick some players' butts? <laughs> 그 난이도 얼마 정도 될까요? 아 uh, 매운 고추가 맵지 않으면은 맛있지 안 아, 매운 고추가 맵지 않으면은 맛 없으니까 예, 충분히 매워야지 맛있어야겠죠. 예. Yeah, so he's saying, just like hot peppers are supposed to be hot, the Souls-like game is supposed to be hard. Yep. So. <laughs> People know what they're going to be getting into. Yeah. So what's the status of the game now? Uh, you know, when, when are we going to get to play Lies of P? Is it built one song to go on the deco? Chushi, Kyuagin, or Tokyo, then you have a little bit of 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 yeah, so the game is about 70% done at this point, and they're looking to launch before summer of next year, for sure. Cool. Interesting. We're trying to get into the hands of gamers as soon as possible, but of course, the quality is everything, so it takes time. What was the inspiration for some of the creatures and monsters and enemies in this game? Because I'm very excited to kill some of those horrible beasts. I think monster in this game, how did you make an idea of the monster? How did you 아트실에서 그리고 설정 컨셉팀에서 정말 잠도 못 주무시면서 개발하고 있어요. 그래서 그렇게 나올 수 있었던 거는 그냥 번떡이나 아이디어가 아니라 정말 많은 고민과 그리고 토론과 그리고 리서치하는 시간이 있었기에 이런 결과물들이 나올 수 있었던 것 같습니다. So a lot of these ideas weren't just like epiphanies. It's just through the sheer hard work of the art team, just putting in long hours and iterating ideas again, iterating on ideas again and again and again to find like the right concepts. All right, well, we're very excited. Congrats again to Liza P. Stella and Leone, what is next? Thank you, guys. Well, what's next is apparently the crowd going nuts, and rightfully so. The next category is Best Action Game, and we actually brought someone out to tr introduce this award. Ihr Lieben, seid ihr bereit für Frodo Krüger? Hello, 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 hello. <clears throat> Gamescom day three, my voice is absolutely gone already. I'm, I'm beyond dead, vocal cord wise. I shouldn't even be talking right now, but I don't care. No, you're fine. <laughs> it, it sounds great, doesn't it? Oh, it's great. It's, it's like It's like Lemmy ish. Oh, yeah. Motorhead people, vibes, people you know? would kill for that voice. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm here on behalf of the uh, Gamescom Award jury, and I'm here to announce the three nominees in the category Best Action Game. And the nominees are Metal Hell Singer, System Shock, and Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide. All right. Now, the Best Action Game winner is Metal, Metal Hell Singer. Hell Singer. You. This would sound so much better if I wasn't that hoarse. We have the creative director of the game here with us. Come take a step closer. Congratulations on winning the best action game of the Gamescom Award 2022. So Metal Hellsinger is a game, it's a rhythmically uh, paced first person shooter where you have to actually pull the trigger while you know, listening to the beat. You have a lot of awesome musicians in this project. Matt Heavey, to say one of the names. It's one of the names you could actually know, lead singer of Trivium. How hard was it to get all of these voice, not voice actors, but all of these metal vocalists together in one project? Yes. Yes, as in 10 out of 10, very, very hard. Nevertheless, you made it, you made a great game. One last question, when is it coming out? Uh, September 15th. September 15th, get ready to shoot some bad guys in the face. Metal Hellsinger is a rhythm-based shooter featuring a ton of incredible metal artists lending their talents to the soundtrack. Here to accept the award for best action game of Gamescom 2022 is a representative from the studio. Metal Hellsinger is looking very cool. I cannot wait for this game. It's been a big hit at the show this year. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Can you I hold this like this? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. You guys had a concert last night, right? Last night? Yeah, maybe two nights ago. Two nights ago. I mean, like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yes. I heard there was a pretty good turnout for that, though. That's. Yeah, we had like 3,500 people and then like 2,000 other people uh, that couldn't get in. So we're sorry about that. But that. It was good. That bodes well. Yeah. Now, who's your. You've got a lot of really talented musicians on in this game. Who's your, like, pie in the sky, just like mm. perfect, you know, dream musician to have in this? Alive or Dead. 
Alive yeah. or Dead. Sure. Uh, Ronnie James Dio. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. And then like Lemmy. Yeah. Like, those are the sure. Those are the two yeah. Five. If this game is a hit, are you planning any like genre spinoffs like jazz Hellsinger or <laughs> classical uh, super talk, jazz hands? About country Hellsinger. Oh my country God. Hellsinger. <laughs> I mean, no. uh, That's perfect. I mean, one of the things about like metal and just music in general is that you can always kind of expand the, the border. So we would love to be able to, you know. Uh, do that, but I think jazz is maybe a bridge too far. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Is it is it fair to say this is like uh, a, a rhythm based, you know, sort of like Doom game? Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like a Doom and Rock Band. If okay, you, perfect. If yeah. they were mated, sure, or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What sort of was the first spark where you were like, I have to make this game? Like, where where did this the orig- original idea come from? For um, you? I was playing uh, I was playing Doom 2016, mm-hmm. uh, and I was listening to Meshuggah. If you know Meshuggah, um, I was listening to Bleed, and uh, um, I was shooting. Just like I turned down the Doom soundtrack, which is great, but I turned it down, and I was I was trying to shoot stuff uh, with the beats overlapping the um, my shots, and I was like, that feels pretty good. Yeah, and then. Uh, I, and then I said to a friend, like, it would be cool to be to flip it and have be the demon fighting your way out of hell instead of the space marine killing all demons. Uh, and then I forgot about it for a few years. Uh, and then when I had the opportunity to make something else, I, I was like, oh, yeah, there's this other game that I would like to make. And uh, nice. luck, luckily we were able to make it, you know, the people. So in addition to metal making great music, it also accounts for a lot of great album covers. Have What are some visual influences for, for Metal Health Singer? Oh, man. Um, I mean... I think there's just like a, there's a lot of uh, well there's a lot of album covers. The, the original pitch for the game was it's it's a metal album cover come to life. So like when I was first looking at stuff, I was looking at like High on Fire album covers and stuff. Uh, and obviously I was looking at Doom and I was looking at there are lots of games set in Hell. There's now there's one more, uh, but um, yeah I think uh, um, some movies. Uh, what was that movie? Uh, Oh God! The one with Keanu Reeves was it Constantine. Speed. Mm-hmm. Oh sure. Yes, it was. It's very. You can <laughs> see, clearly you get to see shoot the, the bus. I mean, you can see the speed influences everywhere. Speed metal, sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's the yeah. genre. Uh, but yeah. Have you had Have you had people at Gamescom getting hands on with it, or is it just a uh, demos? Um. Oh, he's got a. Everybody's got lift the microphone. Oh, sorry. Every, everybody's a. Uh, uh, playing at the booth over there, so like, tons of people lining up and stuff. We've seen people kind of picking it up quickly, or is it, is it kicking some, yeah. kick some butt yeah, there? I, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, we, we have, um, uh, we've seen both, you know, we've, we've seen like people, people struggling and people, uh, people you know, okay with it. Cool. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, congratulations again. Thanks Thank you so, so much. much for your time. Yeah. We're going to take a very quick break, but when we come back, we've got plenty more awards to give out here at Gamescom, including awards for the best RPG and the best multiplayer game. The Gamescom Awards Show will be right back after this. Stay tuned. Gamescom 2022 is presented by Samsung SSD, essential for gaming. The only thing better than listening to IGN podcasts is watching them. Luckily, all your favorite weekly shows are here on IGN One. Whether you're chasing the latest Xbox releases with Unlocked, looking for your PlayStation fix with Beyond, tracking everything coming to Switch with Nintendo Voice Chat, or catching up on this week's gaming news with GameScoop, we've got you covered. Check it out. Tune in every weekday at 5 p.m. for the best gaming coverage right here on IGN One. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, memes, the best user-generated videos and art, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. 
Everybody loves watching a speedrun of their favorite game, but what if you got a chance to peek into the mind of the developers behind those games as they watch their hard work get completely destroyed right in front of them? What is happening? Oh, I know. <laughs> That's exactly what happens on every episode of Devs React to Speedruns. We invite you to ride along with the developers as they watch, react, and enjoy some of the craziest gameplay by the most skilled speedrunners on the planet. Tune in every Saturday for a brand new episode. Welcome back. The Gamescom Awards show is only just getting started. We still have awards for the best multiplayer game at Gamescom, the best RPG at Gamescom, and so much more. And we're giving out prizes to our wonderful crowd out there. Most of that came from the Gamescom merchandise area powered by Mini. Now let's hear about our next award, best family game. Stella and Leone, what do we got? Thank you, guys. I'm here with my bestie, Sebastian. Hello. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Oh, they're doing just fine and we're making sure of that because we're announcing the best family game. I mean, I mean, I mean, my best friend Dom Toretto used to say it's all about the family. So I think family games are very, very important. I thought I was your best friend. Well, 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 sometimes you have to make priorities like there's priorities. And if it's a priority, and that's it's Dom Toretto. Wrong. Come on. That's true. Well, the nominees for best family games are Fling to the Finish, Econi Island and Earthlock Adventure and Paper Trail. And the winner is Best Family Game, Paper Trail by Newfangled Games. And to accept the award, to accept the award, we got Kathy Cat. And Kathy Cat has a surprise for you. You have to be very, very careful now. She has some presents. Oh, you brought your own paper trail. Here's your award, Kathy. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I have, thank you. Thank you so much. We are new Fangled Games are super thrilled for the award. Thank you so much. <laughs> At the Indie Arena booth, I've seen so many families play it together fathers teaching it to their kids. I actually taught it to my mom before. It's a great family game. We were having so much fun playing. Thank you so much. Yes, go ahead and talk to the guys inside you about wanna, it. I'm going to hand these over. I'm going to hand these over oh, to yes, the crowd. Take those. Yes. I'm going to throw them. Ready? Let's go. Woo! Got them. Paper Trail is a top-down puzzle adventure with charming arts and crafts aesthetic. Here to accept the award is Kathy Cat in just a moment, but I'm very much looking forward to playing this game. I, so I a feel very like cool aesthetic. What's really special about this game is uh, the mechanic is entirely about folding paper over right. each other and then solving puzzles and stuff like that. And it actually kind of reminded me of Mad Foldens, the stuff that were on the back of Mad Magazines, oh, yeah, which yeah, I doubt were an inspiration. Hello. 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 Welcome. Hello. Kathy Cat, congratulations. Thank you so much. We were so thrilled to see that we got the award. It's a, it's a massive milestone, so thank you so much. Of course, yes. Yeah. So for anyone out there who isn't familiar with the game yet, give us sort of just the, the basic idea. All right, Paper Trail is a puzzle game, but we have a really unique twist. It's you take the pages. If you look at the screen yourself, I actually brought some origami paper to demonstrate it to you. Is that okay if I take that of out? Course, yes, yeah, nice. All right. So what we threw into the arena over there where you know, your ori origami paper butterflies, and I hope you guys will remember us by the origami paper. Now, if you look, whoops, oh. <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Let me hold that for Thank you. Thank you. If you look at it, if you look at the screen of Paper Trail, you can see that it is like origami paper, and you fold the pages to solve very cute and unique puzzles. And that is definitely something. And the art is absolutely beautiful. It feels like a wonderful picture book mm -hmm. that you're experiencing while you're solving the puzzles and follow the storyline. 
So you've won best family game here at Gamescom. Was that an idea you had? Did you set out to make a family-friendly game? Well, uh, it's definitely a game for all ages. And uh, I mentioned it briefly before. Uh, in order to <laughs> make sure it's definitely for all ages, I tried to teach it to my mother. <laughs> and she has never touched any kind of games. So it was very interesting to just explain it to her. But because it is so visual and so visual appealing, Definitely anyone can play it. I was very excited. Like she could, she folded it over and she was like, ooh, there's something on the back. And because there's always something exciting to find on the other side of the paper to fold, it keeps you going. It doesn't, you don't have that frustrated moment of, oh, oh I feel stupid. You're like, no, it's somewhere there. I can see it. And the beauty of the artwork carries you through. And let's be honest, if my mom, who's never touched any kind of digital games, <laughs> can play it, I am sure anyone can. And also, I've seen dads teaching it to their children when they were at the booth. Like, I was like, oh, let me explain. He was like, no, sweet. I want to teach my child how the game mechanic works. And they really enjoyed it as well. Now, the sort of illustrative art style of the actual aesthetic here, where did that come from? Was there any like specific like sort of children's books that the, the, the dev team, you know, go reading and flipping through to, to, to land on where they are with us? I think the art style is definitely one of the things that drives it. Um, I find it very interesting because a lot of people who came to the Indie Arena booth, everyone kind of, it seems to be a thing that everyone puts something in it thinking, oh, I think this has like fairy tale roots. And mm -hmm. another person came and said, oh, I think this has maybe some, some East European roots. Everyone feels com connected to this art. Everyone feels like there's something that connects them to the art. And I think that's what makes it so special and gets everyone to enjoy it as well. Well, I can't wait to play. Thank you so much, and congratulations again. Thank you. Can I quickly also uh, say the game is completely on Steam. You can play the demo, so if you can't be here right now at Gamescom, be sure to check it out on Steam. We have the demo there. Play along. Enjoy playing it with your family, with your friends. And if you can also check out our social media. And there's also on Discord, we might have some special treats for you as well there. Very cool. Thanks Thank, to, you. thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, the award it. gods demand another award. Leone, <laughs> what's next? Hello, guys. Thank you so much. This has been a great show so far, and I'm here to present the best indie games. But first off, I think I'm not even fit to do that. I want to give you someone who can do it just as well. I'm introducing mobile game content creator Pomfi! What's up, Gamescom? Seid ihr da? Sehr schön, wunderbar. Ich würde gern einmal gucken. Habt ihr noch Stimme alle? Aber wir machen jetzt drei Parts. Hier ein Cut, hier ein Cut. Ihr seid I, ihr seid G, ihr seid N. Habt ihr verstanden? Ja. I! Na, 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 na. Ein bisschen lauter! <lacht> Perfect, guys! Okay. Oh my god, thank you so much, Pompey. <laughs> All right, now it's time to announce the nominees for the best indie game. It is either Incolinati, Paper Trail, or Sunday Gold. And Pompey, I'm going to leave this honor to right. you. Here's the award. Thank you. And now let us know who won. It's Incolinati! <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Big hands of applause. Guys, here's your award. <laughs> so you'll have time to chat all about the game once you get inside. But let me just tell you, well deserved. And thank you for being here. A big applause for everyone. And for Pompey. Thank you, guys. Inculinati is a strategy game with an art style of a medieval manuscript, and this game looks so cool, mm -hmm. it's so unique. 
uh, I learned, actually learned a new word when I was researching this game. Marginalia, which is a, a term for like scribbles and artwork around oh, the text, around the margins of a manuscript. I like that a lot. Yeah, this is such a fun game to look at. Um, it also just has a ton of personality. I'm super, super into this. Hey! Hey, welcome! Here to talk Inklunari. Wadishek, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, sorry, sorry. Welcome. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this game looks so cool, so unique. Can you sort of give us the gist of it? Yeah, like it's. I think that the most important thing that is uh, we are based in inspired by medieval manuscripts. So we like we would need to thank to medieval artists because without them we won't be here. So they were so cool ideas. Like when we see the uh, when our art directors um, show the to the team like the, these fights between rabbits and dogs and the medieval manuscripts. It like like we had to do a game about it and show to the world. It's it's so cool, it should be popular, more popular, so like this award is from probably for medieval illuminators. So it is a strategy game, right? Yeah, turn based strategy, inks based strategy. So is it gonna be complicated because I'm not too much into strategy? <laughs> Can I play this game? Yeah, like it's easy easy to start, but mm -hmm. hard to master. So you okay. can like start and do some things and like experiment and you know uh, learn with the errors. So but it's still pretty cool to like you know you, you be, being defeated because like when some rabbits push you out of the battlefields and you fall down on the ground, it's like you feel like okay, so maybe I lost, but it's still pretty funny. Right. Now nice. I've never I've never asked this question in my entire career, but there's a lot of farting in this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me why? <laughs> yeah, because there was a lot of farting of the medieval manuscripts. So it was like if we if we want to pay tribute to these medieval miniatures, we have to put into in the game because it's this was their humor and we from the very beginning we want to this humor being the part of the very important part of the game not just visually but right. also with the gameplay so if we did if we didn't put a fart humor in the game it was like a sensor censorship you know yeah it wouldn't be doing it justice yeah. i think so, what this tells us is that fart jokes are truly timeless yes <laughs> yeah so it, it showed us the medieval people have a similar uh, <laughs> sense of humor to us so it's very important well congratulations again thank you very much we need to take another quick break, but when we return, hundreds of multiplayer games descend on Gamescom every year, and every year, only one takes home that chicken dinner, that victory crown royale, the big dub. <laughs> we'll pick this year's winner after this. I bet Max wrote that. You did. <laughs> Gamescom 2022 is presented by NHTSA. Drive sober or get pulled over. I'm Akeem Lawanson and this is What to Watch on IGN One. It's a weekly show where we check out the latest and greatest in trailers, reviews, and everything else in the world of entertainment. Tune in to new episodes every Friday at 9 p.m. on IGN One. IGN is your go-to for the latest and best in games, movies, and television. And with over 50 million IGN subscribers, you're in good company. Oh, we're shooting turkey! Thanks to your help, we've raised over $100,000 for charity. Brought you and creators the world over together for events like Gamescom and DC Fandom. Brenton Thwaites here, I play Dick Grayson. And made your voices heard. You voted almost 30 million times in our best video game of all time in Super Movie Madness tournaments, and posted over 40 million times on IGN's message boards. The chat must flow. Catch our unending stream of up-to-date news and so much more over at IGN.com or subscribe to IGN on YouTube. And check out IGN Games and IGN Movies and TV for deep dives into your preferred pop culture. Plus, IGN guides to get help on veritably any game from our team of experts. No matter where you are, IGN.com, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, IGN has you covered. Hey you! Hmm? Yes, you! Do you have fun? Fear of missing Gamescom. Relax. Gamescom is everywhere you want. Gamescom now. Register now. What's up, everybody? I'm Stella Chung, and you're about to get your weekly fix. 
This is the show where we round up all the biggest gaming and entertainment headlines you won't want to miss. Tune into new episodes every Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on IGN1. Welcome back to the 2022 Gamescom Awards Show live on IGN. In just a second, we'll announce the winners of the best multiplayer game and best ongoing game of Gamescom. But first, if you want to be a part of Gamescom, you can be. Dive into the Gamescom-verse for yourself with Epics. Just scan the QR code down below to get started on your adventure to help Epi protect the Gamescom vault from the evil future. You'll use skills, buffs, mysterious crystals, and some button mashing to complete Gamescom Epics quests and earn fantastic digital rewards and even some physical ones, too. The adventure lasts all games come long, so don't wait. You want to read this part? Can you see this here? Well, <laughs> on top of that, Gamescom keeps busy year, well... And they're not just focused on video games. Since 2020, Gamescom and the Gamescom community have grown a forest in southeast Germany that now covers over 20,000 square meters. You can help us grow the forest by heading to Gamescom.global and buying a green ticket today. All right, let's hear about our next award. Yeah, speaking of dreams, isn't it, it is an absolute dream to be here today. Now, for the best multiplayer game nominees, we have Goat Simulator 3. Never thought I would ever say that, but... <laughs> but, but here we are, and here we did. Yeah. Then we have The Dark Pictures, The Devil in Me, and Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. All right. Oh, let me see. Ah, oh, huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The winner for this year's Gamescom Award for best multiplayer game. It's Warhammer 40k Dark Tide! Yes. Yes. Over Come over here, guys. Here's your award. Well deserved. Uh, do you want to say something real quick? Sure, thank you. First of all, it's great to be back here at Gamescom. I've been missing this so much. Um, second out, shout out to the team at home at Fat Shark. You're truly amazing. I love you. Uh, getting this multiplayer award means a lot to us. We do co-op games. We love multiplayer. We want to see gamers play together. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Wow. Games coming to you November 30th. We cannot wait to play with you all in Dark Tide. Games are made to, made to be played together, and together you shall do an interview with the guys inside. Taking it back to you. Dark Tide is from the team behind the Vermintide games, but it's making the jump from fantasy Warhammer to the grimdark sci-fi of Warhammer 40k. Please welcome some of the creators of the game who are joining us on the IGN stage right Hi. at this very Hello. moment. How are you doing? Welcome. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Amazing. Thank you, Gamescom. Thank you, IGN. How do you feel? Uh, it feels amazing. It feels amazing to be here. The crowd has been huge, and uh, so many people have come in and played uh, this game that we've been working super, super hard on. The team is very, very proud to bring this to you all, and uh, it's been an honor to win an award like this here. So you're winning best multiplayer game here at Gamescom. For anyone at home who's not familiar, give us the gist of Dark Tide. Yeah, uh, so uh, we are sort of the spiritual successor to Warhammer uh, Vermintide. It's what uh, sort of Fat Shark has been known for to date. We had to make this game. We, we've said for a long time, like, we need to do a Warhammer 40k version of what we've been doing. And so we've been working hard for the last couple of years to just bring that to our players. Four play co op, intense melee combat, ranged, uh, a lot of enemies, a lot of bad guys. Just shoot away, having a good time, see things explode. Sure. That's, that's, that's about it. There are a lot of multiplayer games here at Gamescom. What do you think sets Dark Tide apart? I think that the, the key thing we what we all strive for is to get you know each of our players should be the hero at, at different times in the game. Uh, we make you know you need to cooperate all the time. You can't survive alone. So you either you you fight as a team or you die alone. So I think that's that's the standout. And I think yeah, the team has done a great job in tuning and you know making it the fluid and, and a great experience overall. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we really pushed the cooperative element. Uh, we've had it forever saying, like, uh, we, co-op isn't optional. We need you to, to sort of come together and work as a team. Otherwise, you're going to have a really bad time. <laughs> <laughs> well, so four-player co-op, are there different classes? Is everyone going to play a specific Yeah, role there's the four team? different classes, different specialities. Some are the more ranged, some are more melee. Mm -hmm. We have the big gun, the ogre, it's like a like brute force tank, you know, with a shotgun going around or a ripper gun in, in Warhammer 40k terms. But it's an awesome thing. It's, 
charging through things, body flying and whatever. Uh, it's, it's just awesome, yeah. So you can find with your own play style. Then you can, of course, customize it with different weapons uh, and different loadouts and, and, you know, and also express yourself in the Worm 40k lore so you can go and kit yourself with different type of gear and stuff. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, we wanted to bring a lot of... Uh, um more customization and ways for you to play. We really want to sort of give it over to the player, like, uh, what do you want to do? And we spend a lot of time sort of looking at how we can sort of take this to the next level and really make sure that you can play your own way, which is why we do have like a character creator. And mm. if you want to jump in and play as like four Ogrens, we're not going to say no. So you can get in there and sort of play the game your way. So you're winning best multiplayer game. Can you play it as a single player game? You can play with bots. We always, I mean, we are doing multiplayer, so we, we recommend you to play with other people. Sure. Because I think gaming, together with other, I, I mean, being here at games, come, just meeting people, it's just fantastic. So we want to have the same experience in-game. Meet friends, team up with friends from before, learn new people, play together. Of course, if you want to you know, start off in a gentle way and play with <laughs> bots, you're okay with that. But I always recommend playing with, 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 with other players. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations again. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Let's hear about the nominees of our next award, the Best Ongoing Game. All right, thank you guys, thank you guys, and thank you, Cologne, for being here. So, Stella, we have an exciting thing, the Best Ongoing Games, games that have prevailed through thick and thin. <laughs> so, here's our nominees for Best Ongoing Game. We have Age of Empires 4. Microsoft Flight Simulator or Sea of Thieves. And the best ongoing game gets Sea of Thieves. I don't know who wants to hold the reward. <laughs> to be here. Um, it means a lot to be back at Gamescom, to be meeting all of our fans, uh, everyone coming to the booth. It's been really lovely. Um, the team's worked really hard, so this award means a lot for everyone back home. Um, and yeah. Yeah, it was just super excited to be here and thank you to everyone. Thank you so much. I believe they're ready for you in the studio. So thank you so much. Can we hear it again for Sea of Thieves? Sea of Thieves was released in 2018, and since then, Rare's steady stream of updates has attracted a lively community of swashbucklers, scoundrels, and ruffians here to accept the award. For ongoing game, our representatives from the whole team on Sea of Thieves, welcome. Perfect timing. Hi, how are we doing? I'm doing really well. Yeah, I'm doing really good, thank you. Well, you just won. How are you feeling? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, wow, we won, so I'm a little bit speechless, so sorry if I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. I'm very jealous of you here. I have none. This is why I have this cap. We already talked about it. We can't swap it. But I'm really, really happy that Sea of Thieves won. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's amazing to, to be here and everyone, like, again, I'm a little speechless because there's so many amazing people out there who are rooting for us. But um, everyone at home, back in the studio, is working so hard. So we're just super stoked and, like, four years on, still winning awards. And it's really great. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's in a, you know, four years on, you said, do you feel like Sea of Thieves is in a really good spot right now? Yeah, I mean, we've got so much amazing stuff that's coming your way and we're growing year by year. So I'm very excited that like everyone's still enjoying our game even four years on. So it's amazing like people supporting us. The fans, meeting the fans is amazing as well. So yeah. Yeah, I think so, you know, with our latest captaincy update, we've still, four years later, adding a whole new depth to Sea of Thieves. You can have your own ship, you can sail it, you can have your journey, and it can be represented in what you have on your ship, your cannons, your sails. It's all your journey, your crew, and what you like to do. Um, and the fact that we can add that and bring that to people, even four years after launch, is, uh, is incredible, and I'm hoping everyone's really uh, enjoying it. So what does winning this award mean for the next two years for Sea of Thieves? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're just getting bigger and better. So, I mean, just wait to see what we got in store for you. Yeah, so we had, um, you know, we just started uh, our mysteries, right, which is a really unique way to engage with our, our community and for our community to solve puzzles and to kind of put the pieces together for what's happening in the game. Um, so more mysteries, more adventures, more seasons, bigger, better, more. more. Uh, yeah, more. <laughs> well, bigger and better. That's what That's, I heard. That, those are two really good things when it comes to video games, I think. What do you think are the most exciting aspects of CFDs right now? 
Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, the fact that we are incorporating adventures, we are expanding on our law a, mo- a lot more. So our storytelling is always, always consistent now. And I, and the fact that the fans are always engaging with us in terms of the law is amazing. Yeah, I think it's the it's the like Chloe said, the narrative, right? The story, the adventures, the, these time limited stories that are um, really personal, and we're getting to explore loads of uh, characters' backstories and like where they're going, where they're coming from. Um, and I think uh, you know that's going to keep going, and it's going to be more and more interesting for everybody. Mm. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations again to the whole team on Sea of Thieves. Congratulations. All right, we have to take a quick break. When we return, the best RPG of Gamescom 2022. Stick around. Gamescom 2022 is presented by Saints Row. Be your own boss and take control of Santo Alesso. Tune in to IGN1 for the latest news on your favorite releases, gameplay exclusives, and all the entertainment you can handle. And maybe even some you can. Cinefix on IGN1, your friendly Friday night home for film fanaticism. Ha-ha. You're watching The Weekly Fix, ready to fill you in on anything you may have missed in the world of gaming and entertainment. Find it all in one place on IGN1. They turned into a network. Who knew? IGN Playlist is all of your games in one place. You can build your library and discover new games. Create and follow playlists from friends. Access guides for what you're playing. And rate and rank the games you love to share with the world. Available free with your IGN account. It's for players, no matter where you play. You're a busy gamer with plenty to play. Not a lot of downtime, but you still want to keep up with the latest gaming news? Fret not. No matter where you like to play, PC, PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, I've got the headlines you need to know about. When Half-Life 3 is announced, it'll be on the Daily Fix. When the Switch Pro is announced, you'll be the first to know. And when that big game you just can't wait for is delayed? Yeah. I'll have that news too. The Daily Fix, with me, Nars. Weekdays, only on IGN. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, memes, the best user-generated videos and art, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. Welcome back. This is the Gamescom Awards Show live on IGN. All of Gamescom is a party, but this is when it really feels like a celebration. Let's toss it to our friends on the stage for the next award. So much excitement. Oh my goodness. Where's the excitement, guys? How are we doing? Stella and me, we're here to Stella and me, we're here to announce best role-playing game. Stella, how many hours have you spent? Too many, too, too many. many? Yeah. yeah, same, same here. I would say, let's announce the nominees. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah? Yeah. The nominees for best role-playing game, Dredge, Lies of B, and Sunday Gold. Ooh. All right, we got so many options. And how about let's the winner? How about the winner? What do you think? It's exciting. Oh, my goodness. It is my absolute pleasure to announce the winner, Lies yeah. of P. Congratulations, guys. How do you feel? Oh, thank you, Anne. I'm going to go to the Korean game. Do you know Skid Game in Korea? Uh, this is a kind of a meme in Korea. I like the Skid Game in Korean TV show. 
will be enough in the Korean gaming industry. And I want to say that, 다시 한번 우리 개발실 분들 정말 고생 많이 하셨고, 어, 지금까지 지원해준 네오이즈에게 이 영광을 돌리고 싶습니다. 그리고 지금 한국에서 보고 있을 우리 너프 팀원들 정말 정말 고생 많이 하셨고요. 그리고 무엇보다 저기, 저기에 있는 우리 밤잠, 밤샘 자면서 못 자면서 하는 라이즈 오브 피 관계자분들에게 큰 박수 주셨으면 좋겠습니다. Yeah, I'd like to give special thanks to the development team all the way back in South Korea. And also give special thanks to Neowitz for supporting this project from the very beginning. And he'd also like to point out our co-workers that have joined us here in Gamescom getting very little sleep and working around the clock to get this done. So if you could give them a warm round of applause. His co-workers right there, hype them up, yeah! Thank you guys. This is Liza Fee's second award this year, which isn't that surprising because no lie, it honestly looks really cool. We'll have the developer joining us once again in just a moment. Mitchell, you've gotten to play Liza Fee. I've gotten to play a bunch of Liza Fee, actually. It's probably the game I've played the most uh, at the show so far. I feel like I've become friends <laughs> with you guys. That's good. Can't complain. <laughs> there you go. Welcome back. Congratulations again. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> this time winning for Best RPG. Maybe you uh, speak briefly to the RPG elements of the game. 네, 라이즈 피 같은 경우에는 어떤 RPG 요소가 있을까요? 아, 어, 주인공 캐릭터를 성장시킬 수 있는 요소가 되게 많아요. 그래서 그런 것들만 어, 시도하고 조합하면 할수록 이 플레이 타임이 그냥 밤샘 자면서 할수록 엄청 많은 캐릭터들을 성장시킬 수 있는 요소가 많은 게 일단 RPG 요소에서 가장 특징이라고 말씀드릴 수 있습니다. If you had to point out one aspect of the game, the main character can grow and progress in several different ways so that it really adds to the story element and increases the playtime as well. So it's in a game that you can immerse yourself in for a very, very long period of time. I regret at not asking you about this when, when we interviewed each other, but one of the big aspects of Liza P is the Legion arm. And as you know, many people know, there's also you know, a prosthetic arm in Sekiro. Was there any inspiration that you guys took from Sekiro? 네, 그 레이전 아름 디자인에 있을 때는 혹시 스키로 한테 뭐 영감 받았던 것이 있었을까요? 아, 그러니까 이러한 질문들 되게 많이 많았는데 받았는데 좀 솔직하게 말씀드리자면 저 진짜 프롬 프롬 게임 애들 정말 좋아요. 많이 좋아하고 정말 영감을 많이 받았고 공부도 하고 정말 위대한 게임이라 생각했는데 그러한 제가 즐겼던 모든 어떤 게임들은 저에겐 진짜 좋은 도움이 되고 공부가 되고 영감이 됩니다. 그래서 그러한 게임들을 결국은 저희들에게 저희까지 좋은 게임들을 만드는 데에 어떤 좋은 자산이 되고 원천이 된 거라고 지금 솔직하게 말씀드리고 싶습니다. Yep, so actually, he is a huge fan of Sekiro, and he's gotten that question quite a bit and loves from software games as well. But he doesn't take inspiration just from those games. He takes it from all of the games he's played in his life. And he's trying to use that to create something rather unique with Liza P and brand new. So it's never just one game, it's a series of many games that he's played before. 하지만 우리는 다르게 할, 그거보다 다르고 뛰어나게 하려고 정말 노력 많이 하고 있습니다. 그래서 우리가 나올 때까지 꼭 지켜봐 주셨으면 좋겠습니다. And they're always giving their best effort to do something different and even better than any games that have come out before, just to set a real new standard in the industry. Well, as someone who's played, a, like I said, a bunch of Lies of P, it's a phenomenal game. It's one of the best controlling Souls likes I've played in a long time. And uh, yeah, I'm so, I'm so stoked for your guys' success here at Gamescom. Congratulations again. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It was great. Thank you so much. Okay, up next, best sports slash racing game of Gamescom 2022. Let's find out who are the nominees. Come on. What's going on Corrado, here? Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Yeah, stop I, um, it! Come on! We need the stage. I, I can do Thank that. You. I can do We're... that easily. That's embarrassing. Oh, um, oh. So let's go ahead and look at the best sports and racing game nominees here: AEW Fight Forever, Ooh. Gold, the Club Manager, and Ultimines. <laughs> you gonna help me with the yeah, winner? Yeah, and the winner is AEW Fight Forever. Well, give it a try, give it a try, come on, come on, come on. Do it, yeah. Next one. Not worthy, not worthy, uh uh, not worthy, not worthy, not worthy. Well, I, I'd say you. You know what? You, you know yeah, what? give me, it a try, come on, give it a try. Oh, I have a good feeling, I have a good feeling about this. Oh. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> wow. this I knew it, I knew it. Like, this is hard? You should give it to, you see, I'd say we give it to the audience later. Guys, you know, how do you feel? Yeah. We feel fantastic. You know, our goal has always been to make an experience that's as fun and as refreshing. 
Thank you. Maybe we should actually give you the award. Yeah. I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was like, I wanted, I wanted to keep it. We always want to make something that's fun and refreshing, like our TV wrestling show. And to this, to us, this means we are on the right path. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We want to give a shout out to Kenny Omega, a living legend in the world of professional wrestling. Unprecedented that a pro wrestler would actually help develop a pro wrestling game along with Ukes to make. AEW Fight Forever, the 2002 Gamers Guide and Sports Game of the Year. Thank, Thank you, you guys. So Thank you very much. You. On behalf of THQ Nordic, AEW, and Ukes, Thank you, IGN. Thank you, Gamescom. This is a perfect place to put the first playable game, and we love you guys. Thank you. We love you too. Congratulations. <laughs> AEW Fight Forever looks to combine the fun of beloved arcade wrestling games with modern gameplay and a roster of familiar new wrestlers. Mitchell, you spent some time with the game. I did. Yeah? I had a great time with it. It, it was waves of nostalgia as a fan of the N64 wrestling games. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely amazing. You feel like they're, they're doing a good job of melding sort of classic arcade games with a modern feel? 100%. I think that you know, that's what they're, they're going for, and it's absolutely what they're doing. And I had no idea that I would be sitting next to Evil Uno during this interview. Oh, my it's goodness. Blowing my mind right now. Joining us here on stage. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We're very, very excited. Uh, this is a, gr it's a great day for our game and for us at AEW. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, sorry, go I'll ahead. Go. Oh, I was just going to say, we're really excited. THQ Nordic and Ukes have had a long history of making award-winning wrestling games. And then you have this new wrestling promotion that's only been around for three years. They've come out of the gate swinging. And first game, first partnership between all three of us, and we're sitting here at this couch with you guys. We couldn't be more excited about it. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Uh, Colt mentioned Kenny Omega outside about being a, a huge part. Can you talk a little bit about Kenny Omega's involvement with this game? So Kenny Omega, not only a professional wrestler, world-renowned New Japan Wrestling, AEW, he worked step-by-step step with Ukes. We've never done a game where a wrestler who is also an avid gamer was on the calls every meeting, playing the game week in, week out. It's been awesome to watch these two collaborate, and I think you're really going to see all the fun we had and all the expertise when the game comes out. And then, Uno, I know you're a big gamer yourself. Talk to me a little bit about the nostalgia that you felt getting into this game as you know a fan of wrestling games growing up. Well, I mean, I've been raised on the uh, N64 wrestling games, you and do. I think a lot of people have, uh, and we've been clamoring for for something in that vein, you know, something more arcadey, more fun, easy to pick up that I can you know play with friends that might not enjoy wrestling, that may not like the full simulation of uh, recent games, and honestly. I think we've hit it out of the park. It's been, uh, it's been. I played a ton of it recently. I've been at the booth all week. Um, it's. Uh, I'm very, very happy with the way it's come out. Uh, it is a dream come true to see that engine come back around. Well, very cool. And thank you so much. And congratulations again. Thank you very much for your time. All right, we need to take another quick break. But when we return, the best strategy game of Gamescom Awards and so much more. We'll be right back. Gamescom 2022 is presented by Samsung SSD, essential for gaming. Hey you! Hmm? Yes, you! Do you have fun? Fear of missing Gamescom. Relax. Gamescom is everywhere you want. Gamescom now. Register now.
In a world with non-stop news about Marvel, Netflix, and Star Wars, you need a show with accurate reporting, hard-hitting commentary, and me. I'm Akeem Lawanson, the host of The Fix Entertainment. Whether it's the latest superhero scoop, film fiasco, or anime announcement, I'll be right here covering all the latest in major studio headlines and pop culture news. Make sure to catch The Fix Entertainment wherever you watch IGN. Tune in to IGN One for the latest news on your favorite releases, gameplay exclusives, and all the entertainment you can handle. And maybe even some you can't. Cinefix on IGN One, your friendly Friday night home for film fanaticism. Ha-ha. You're watching the Weekly Fix, ready to fill you in on anything you may have missed in the world of gaming and entertainment. Find it all in one place on IGN One. They turned into a network. Who knew? Welcome back to the Gamescom Awards here on IGN Live. The Gamescom Awards recognize the celebrate and celebrates the biggest, best, and most innovative things at Gamescom each year, selected by a panel of Gamescom's judges from across the industry. Let's find out about our next award. Seb, Leone, what do we got? Hey. Hello! Leo, what's your favorite simulation game ever? Uh, flight Simulator, because ah. I get to experience panic in real life. My, well, mine is like Farm Simulator, because I don't have a farm and I can just live through it. Let's have a look at the nominees. The nominees for Best Strategy Simulation Game, we have Age of Darkness, Ooh. Odyssey Simulator, wow. All right, here we go. And Ixion. Okay, those are very interesting picks, and I'm glad I didn't have to choose. And the winner for Best Strategy Simulation winner, we got Axion, Calypso Media Group. Axion! And accepting the award is Jack Grant. Thank you very much. How do you feel? Oh, amazing. It's like truly an honor because the competition is so fierce as well. So, yeah, it really means a lot. Um, we just want to say a big thank you to the developers at Bua, really, because it's such a small team. They're like geniuses what they could do with uh, the tools they have. Yeah. Well, you earned it. You earned it. Thank you. Congratulations. So you'll have plenty of time to talk about the game more with the guys inside. Thank you so much for being here. Back to the studio. Ixion is a strategy space opera launching players into the stars. Will they be forced to juggle exploration, survival, and city building? Here to accept the award for the best strategy or simulation game of Gamescom 2022 is Jack Grant, QA lead and platform specialist representing the upcoming strategy game. Ixion, hello. Hello. Welcome. How are you all? Great. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, like I said, it's really an honor because the competition was so fierce and this is the first award that Bulwark, the development studios, won. So mm -hmm. definitely means a lot. Yeah. It seems like kind of a high concept game. Can you sort of give us the basic gist of it? Oh God, so we've been calling it a narrative city builder. So it's almost like Frostpunk in space. So you, there's a big survival aspect. You're going through uh, multiple chapters, each with a different, like unique story. Uh, but at the same time, you're building an entire city inside a space station. Why did you pick space? Because it feels like there's like a wave of space games coming out right now. Honestly, the developers are just massive sci-fi nerds. Oh, and yeah. they very much like the like super deep, super like high concept, like say, um, ideas, and they just wanted to uh, bring it to life. Those were both very good questions. I have a stupid one. What does Ix what does Ixion mean? What does the name mean? Okay, so <laughs> like I said, they like all the high concept stuff, and they love mythology. And Ixion it comes from a. Uh, a myth with Zeus where he crossed him and then he was on a burning wheel forever. And the Tycoon Station is a wheel, so it's like you're floating through space, doomed, basically. Oh, wow, that's oh, gosh. Yeah. bleak. <laughs> well, yeah, totally. <laughs> is there an ultimate goal that you're sort of building towards in the game? Yeah, so the actual main story is you've built this giant space station, Earth, almost like real life, is kind of going down in the dumps and you want to find a new planet to settle on and I can't say too much, but obviously it all goes wrong. And you have to try and keep your crew alive while still trying to find this magical planet. Will there be nice aliens? Not only just like <laughs> villains or enemies. 
I want some nice aliens in there. I can't say too much, but there's definitely some weird creatures that you're encountering. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Tell us about the, I guess, the solar system, the galaxy. Are the planets bespoke? Are they custom made as a procedural? Um, so it's all bespoke. It's five different chapters you go to, and each chapter has a completely different solar system, all filled with all these like uh, completely alien planets, which uh, look really amazing as well. Now, this seems like a very uh, punishing, hardcore kind of game. Is is there any kind of like, I don't know, like casual mode for people who just want to make cool space cities? <laughs> there isn't. It's very much in the vein of like Dark Souls, where uh, the difficulty is almost part of the story, and it's okay to fail because you just uh, can rebuild it even better. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations again. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Let's check in on our next award. Thank you. Thanks. All right, all right, all right. We're back out here. Everyone's on fire. How are you feeling, Kala? How are you doing? That's, that's the spirit. That's the spirit. Oh, oh. And that's the award also, Sebastian. Good job. Oh, yeah, well... We got different colors. All right, let's have a look at the nominees for best original game. We got Metal Hellsinger, Ilkuna. Well, uh, Inkoli Naughty. Yeah, well, I don't want to. I don't want to pronounce it wrong, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I we got Penny Man as well. All right. Who's the winner? Leone, announce the winner. The Gamescom Award 2022 for most original game is Inkoli Naughty. <laughs> Guys, here's your award. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, thank you so much. Um, we uh, created this game mostly for you to know, to have a break from reality, uh, have a great time. So we hope uh, in a very, very short time you're going to experience this for yourself. And we'd like to thank our publisher, Delic Entertainment, amazing folks from Xbox who also have us and Game Pass, uh, and our amazing team from, from Yasa Games, our team members in Warsaw. So uh, that, the, this reward is for them. Thank you guys so much. You have plenty of time to talk about it inside while we're hyping out the crowd. Congratulations. Some more. Thank you. Back to the studio. This is Inkulinati's second Gamescom Award this year, and its art style plus a mix of strategy and humor definitely makes it stand out. Joining us once again, Inkulinati. Hello. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, definitely, original is, is a great way to describe this game. Where, um, where, where did the sort of idea for this game come from? Um, actually, like many um, great things in life from memes, uh, <laughs> our art director showed us, uh, you know, these fantasy drawings uh, on the margins of medieval books that were uh, incredible, to say the least, and we immediately thought that it would be a great base for a turn-based strategy when you can uh, make these, um, these beasts living and, you know, play with them and compete with your friends. So this is your studio's first game, right? Yes, How does right. it feel for you to have won two awards here already? Um, I would say that it's an uh, incredible thing. Um, like the only thing better than winning a Gamescom award is winning two Gamescom awards. Right. <laughs> so um, so um, we are really proud that we, can, uh, that we could um, achieve something like that uh, with, with, our, uh, with our team. Now, besides memes and actual history, what, what were some influences on this? I feel like there's a little bit of Monty Python in there. Yes, there's, there, there's a lot of um, influential. Monty, Mo, Monty Python is also like our main inspiration for humor. Uh, but actually, a lot of humor comes directly from medieval marginalia. Uh, we would like to show people, our gamers, that uh, people in medieval times also like to, you know, laugh from silly things like we do to, today as well. Um, so, so yeah, so that's that's their humor. We try to be as as faithful to the um, history as possible. Uh, we are in history game, but we want, you know, to be uh, to present it in a way that these people 700 years ago wanted to show these fantasy creatures on on, uh, on margin of, margins of medieval books. So a little bird told me that you actually have a medievalist on the yes. team. Yes. So what are you going to do with him after this game? <laughs> Does he have to leave? Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll, we, we will do a Inkulinati too. Maybe, oh, maybe a sequel, I see. but it's still you know up up in the grabs. Um, 
yeah, but working with medievalists is an incredible thing because we also learn a lot about the topic while making a game. So uh, it's also, I think, makes us uh, more smarter people while, uh, while making the game. So that's something that we love to, to do uh, every day. Can you speak a bit, a little bit about the sort of the mechanics of it? Because you know we hear strategy usually mm -hmm. is kind of a mental image that looks more video gamey than this. What, what's the sort of gameplay loop like? Yeah. So um, in Inclinati, you take on the role of uh, Inclinati master, some um, a member of a secret society of Inclinati, uh, and like many mechanics are tied to that. So you can push the beasts or on the battlefield using your hands. So you are sitting in front of the book and you are, thanks to the uh, living ink, a fantasy substance that's, that is in our game, you are pushing the, uh, the beasts on the battlefield, even out of the battlefield. So it's like an insta-kill of any, uh, any um, units on the, on the battlefield. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations again. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. We've got to take a quick break when we're coming back with more Gamescom Awards right afterwards, so keep watching IGN for more. Gamescom 2022 is presented by NHTSA. Drive sober or get pulled over. The only thing better than listening to IGN podcasts is watching them. Luckily, all your favorite weekly shows are here on IGN One. Whether you're chasing the latest Xbox releases with Unlocked, looking for your PlayStation fix with Beyond, tracking everything coming to Switch with Nintendo Voice Chat, or catching up on this week's gaming news with GameScoop, we've got you covered. Check it out. Tune in every weekday at 5 p.m. for the best gaming coverage right here on IGN One. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, Gameplay, custom original content, memes, the best user-generated videos and art, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. Everybody loves watching a speedrun of their favorite game, but what if you got a chance to peek into the mind of the developers behind those games as they watch their hard work get completely destroyed right in front of them? What is happening right now? <laughs> That's exactly what happens on every episode of Devs React to Speedruns. We invite you to ride along with the developers as they watch, react, and enjoy some of the craziest gameplay by the most skilled speedrunners on the planet. Tune in every Saturday for a brand new episode. Gamescom Awards show live on IGN. During opening night live, we got to find out the winners of the most anticipated Xbox and PlayStation and PC games. And in just a moment, we'll reveal the most anticipated Nintendo Switch game of Gamescom 2022. But first, did you know Gamescom has its own game? That's right. Gamescom Epics lets you dive into the gamescom verse for yourself. Just scan the code below to get started on your adventure to help Epi protect the Gamescom vault from the evil future. You're going to use skills, buffs, mysterious crystals, and some button mashing to complete Gamescom Epics quests to earn fantastical digital rewards and maybe some physical ones too. The adventure lasts all Gamescom long, so don't wait. All right, Gamescom is all about having fun, but it's also about doing some good, like the Gamescom Forest Initiative. Since 2020, Gamescom and the Gamescom community have grown a forest in southeast Germany that now covers over 20,000 square meters. You can help us grow the forest by heading to Gamescom.global Gamescom and buying a green ticket today. 
Now, let's find out the nominees for the most anticipated Switch game of Gamescom. Unfortunately, it is not Corrado, but thank you so much for hyping up the crowd. Are y'all having fun out there? All right, Leonie, do you, want me, do you want to help me with the nominees for this award? Oh, yes, I'd love to, because Nintendo Switch games have been great this year. And we have the three nominees for the Gamescom Award 2022 Most Wanted Nintendo Switch Game. And they are Tin Hearts, Earhead, and Edge of Sanity. Ooh, and the winner is Tin Hearts. Thank you very much. It's a massive honor to accept this award on behalf of the team. We've worked so hard. It's our debut game, and it's, a, like I say, a massive honor to be able to accept this. How do you feel about the reception that you've had here? The reception's been amazing. We've had people come playing the game. Really overwhelming. Wait, thank you so much. I believe they're ready for you in the studio. Thank you. <laughs> All right, back to you guys. Tinhart has you guiding a troop of adorable ten soldiers through a colorful toy-sized world, which certainly looks like it would be right at home on Switch. Here to accept the award for most wanted Nintendo Switch game of Gamescom is senior producer at Rogue Sun, Chris Brooks. Congratulations to you and the whole team on Ten Hearts. Thank you so much. So, most wanted Nintendo Switch game of Gamescom. Give us the sort of gist of, of what this game is. So it's a Lemmings-like puzzle game. I'm where... in. I'm in. You said Lemmings. <laughs> Well, you're playing through uh, this alternate Victorian reality that we've built, um, playing a character called Albert, where you're guiding uh, your tin soldiers through puzzles as they're also guiding you through your memories. Hmm. Now tell us a little bit about sort of the, the props and objects. As I, saw, I saw the trailer you put up and it gets, it gets kind of like intense and a little more fascicle. There's, there's like a sort of a steampunk looking spider running around. What's, I guess, what's this world? So uh, you're playing through Albert's house. Uh, you start in the attic of the house, and things are very whimsical and magical. And as you progress through the house, the theme of the story changes. There's a few twists and turns. It gets a little bit dark. Oh, no. Um, and this sends you on a journey down into the, the basement where you saw these steampunk devices. as electricity circuits you need to manage, steam power devices, and um, yeah, spiders and uh, all sorts of that's Wind why school I don't, that's why I don't in the basement. There's don't too much the weird stuff down there, yeah. Can we get a little teaser? What kind of puzzles are we going to get in the game? So there's a whole range of different puzzles. Um, you can see on the screen right now, I think uh, there's balloons. Uh, you, you're leaping over mm -hmm. different areas. Uh, there's uh, like the steam generator machines where you need to manage electricity, turn things mm -hmm. on and off, opening up different routes. Uh, there's musical instruments. There's a whole range of... Uh, uh, my, the list could go on all night, I think. This whole design seems like it would be really suited well for like hidden collectibles and Easter eggs. Is, is there just stuff hidden around the levels? There's definitely many things hidden around the levels. There's mm -hmm. multiple routes you could take through some puzzles. Um, and our studio has a, a little bit of a, a legacy in Lionhead, and there's some, a couple of fable Easter eggs okay. hidden in there. Nice. nice. Do the soldiers have different jobs or, or different functions that they perform? Pardon? Sorry. So, so in lemmings, you, there are different types of lemmings that perform different functions in the world. Is it the same thing with the soldiers? Yes, yeah, so your main soldiers here are, are follower soldiers, but you also have a soldier that you can control directly, and you run around jumping, platforming around the level, a bit like a, a Mario character. Oh. And we have other characters and toys in the level. Gertrude the Explorer believes that all the soldiers should be free, and uh, yeah, there's lots hidden in there to explore. Now, there's soldiers. Is there, is there any combat, or are you mostly just trying to keep them alive? <laughs> uh, you're mostly trying to keep them alive, but you, you mentioned the spiders. They are, they, they're dropping down from above. There's also machines that are trying to smash them into, sm into smithereens, oh. or they're falling into a boiler and burning to death. <laughs> so there's a few enemies, actually. Enemies. Yeah, exactly. Obstacles. Enemies and obstacles, and, and you mainly explore these in the basement where the, where the game's taken a bit of a dark turn. So you mentioned Lemmings. What were, what were some of the other influences? What are, what's sort of the DNA of this game? So the Nutcracker. The way our studio <laughs> likes to approach making games is to look at like what would really make, be a fun game to make and also what would be a really fun game to play. And Lemmings was a, a genre, I suppose, that hadn't been explored for a long time. True, and true. Uh, we really wanted to explore it in a different way and build this rich narrative around it. You're winning for most wanted Nintendo Switch game, but is Tin Hearts coming to other platforms as well? It's coming out on PC, consoles, and also VR. 
Oh, this is great. I feel like Switch is a good, it's a good size yeah, yeah. for it, though. It's very, very yeah. small. It's, I'm, I'm a huge toy collector. Is, are you going to make little figurines at all? No. Uh, that... so, some of our team are very enthusiastic about printing <laughs> uh, figurines and our, our publisher-wide productions. They love to make special editions, and I'm sure there'll be uh, things like that coming out soon. Well, that is a great idea. I will look... collect it. I can't wait myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> the notes looks very cool. Congratulations again. Congrats. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. It's time for our next award. Let's head back to the stage. Yeah, you hear the excitement. Hi, Stella. We're here for the next award, and I can't wait to see what this one has in store for us. Yes, so the next award is Best Booth. And I actually don't have a list of nominees because all booths are eligible in the Gamescom Entertainment area. Wow. So, Leone, I'm just going to have you read the winner for us. All right, the winner for Best Booth of Gamescom 2022. Oh, is one with a giant figure of a beloved anime figure. It's Bandai Namco! Here's your award, congratulations! Thank you very much. We're super happy to be back in Cologne, Gamescom. And everybody, we are doing it for you guys. Thank you for the award, we're super, super humbled. Thank you for putting this giant inflated Luffy into our lives, and I love it. <laughs> back to the studio, you got to talk with him more. Now this is a bittersweet award for us because we're busy hosting stuff on these couches up here this whole time. We don't get out there to see many booths up close, but there definitely seem to be some very impressive ones this year. Here to accept the award for the best booth is a representative of Bandai Nemco. Welcome, congratulations. Hi, thank Hi. you very much. Um, humbled, it's amazing. First time back at Gamescom and winning best booth I mean, is, uh, yeah. yeah, it's something special. Well, there's a reason. The booth looks amazing, and this huge statue of Luffy, like, is mind-blowing. Yeah, like, it's, uh, it came together really, really last minute, and we're super <laughs> happy that we were able to bring Luffy with us. Um, but also, like, super happy to have, like, um, Park Beyond there, game developed in Germany, bringing it to Germany, to the audience here. Everybody should have a try. So come to our booth. It's the best one, apparently. So <laughs> apparently, apparently. True. How, how early does the, you talk about this coming together last minute, how early do ideas start getting thrown around? Like, how did you do, land on a big statue? Mm -hmm. like, let, me, let me put it this way. <clears throat> Two months ago, I already started thinking about Gamescom next year. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, whoa. What happens, what happens to the giant things after Gamescom? Where do they go? <laughs> it, yeah. it, it deflates and goes back to Belgium. <laughs> or someone is taking them home. Oh, you wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> What are some of the other big games that you have at your booth this year? So we have um, The Dark Pictures, The Devil and Me by mm -hmm. Supermassive Games. Uh, it's the finale of our anthology season one. Yeah. Um, it's uh, very exciting, very scary, so absolutely come check it out. Um, then obviously um, One, one Piece, Piece Odyssey, where you can see the yeah. giant Luffy statue. And um, uh, last but not least, Park Beyond, um, which we're super proud of, partnering with a German developer. Um, it's very exciting, coming together really well. Um, look online, the previews are there. I think uh, IGN has a very good one, so thank <laughs> you for that. Um, but, but yeah, super excited to have like, uh, uh, to bring more roller coaster fun in people's lives. Who doesn't want that? Nice. Yeah, I mean, the whole Gamescom has a sort of amusement park vibe to it, and the booths are a big part of that, too. So that's, you know, it's fun to see that. How's the, how's, how's the fan reception been? Uh, fantastic. Uh, it's absolutely great. Like, um, we, our community managers are running around on the booth, talking to everyone, seeing what the feedback is, and everybody's loving it. So, yeah. very happy. And how does it feel to see all of the One Piece fans with all of their hats and cosplays going to the booth and play One Piece? It's... Uh, it's something special because it's been a while. It's been a while mm -hmm. since we've actually interacted with our community. So for us, when, when we were hearing Gamescom was coming back, this is what we were hoping for, right? <laughs> Everybody's here and yeah. uh, it's like a, um, the first day of school again. It's great. Yeah. Well, ben and Nemco, best booth at Gamescom 2022. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure. And uh, see you next year. Yeah. We'll be back bigger and better. So. Ooh, Ooh, exciting. Definitely. We're going to have to take a very quick Thank break you. here at the Gamescom Awards. We'll be right back with more in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. He went somewhere. Gamescom 2022 is presented by Saints Row. 
be your own boss and take control of Santo Alesso. I'm Akeem Lawanson, and this is What to Watch on IGN One. It's a weekly show where we check out the latest and greatest in trailers, reviews, and everything else in the world of entertainment. Tune in to new episodes every Friday at 9 p.m. on IGN One. IGN is your go-to for the latest and best in games, movies, and television. And with over 50 million IGN subscribers, you're in good company. Oh, we're shooting turkeys! Thanks to your help, we've raised over $100,000 for charity. Thanks, you guys. Brought you and creators the world over together for events like Gamescom and DC Fandom. Brenton Thwaites here. I play Dick Grayson. And made your voices heard. You voted almost 30 million times in our best video game of all time in Super Movie Madness tournaments and posted over 40 million times on IGN's message boards. The chat must flow. Catch our unending stream of up-to-date news and so much more over at IGN.com or subscribe to IGN on YouTube. And check out IGN Games and IGN Movies and TV for deep dives into your preferred pop culture. Plus, IGN guides to get help on veritably any game from our team of experts. No matter where you are, IGN.com, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, IGN has you covered. Hey, you! Yes, you! Do you have fun? Fear of missing Gamescom. Relax. Gamescom is everywhere you want. Gamescom now. Register now. What's up, everybody? I'm Stella Chung, and you're about to get your weekly fix. This is the show where we round up all the biggest gaming and entertainment headlines you won't want to miss. Tune into new episodes every Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on IGN1. Welcome back to the Gamescom Awards here on IGN Live. Gamescom is all about bringing the world together to play video games, but it's also about shocking the world with exciting new video game reveals and the kick-ass trailers that go with them. Our next award is for the best trailer or announcement at Gamescom. Let's take it outside for the award nominees and winner. All right, we have the best trailer slash announcement award, which is community-based, by the way. So Ooh. every trailer or announcement featured in Gamescom Opening Night Live is eligible. Wow, that's interesting. There were a lot of cool trailers, weren't there? Yeah, so the community got to vote on this. And uh, Leonie, could you help me with the winner here? All right, I will. So the community has spoken, and the best trailer for Gamescom 2022 goes to Hogwarts Legacy. Unfortunately, they're not here right now to accept the award, but uh, we'll still toss it into the studio. Back to you, you got to talk more about it. Video games are immensely complicated worlds for players to explore, so trailers often have to do some heavy lifting to establish the look, feel, mechanics, tone, and overall universe. Let's chat about Hogwarts Legacy. I think they're going to bring up the new trailer here in just a moment. It's a gameplay trailer that shows two students exploring Slytherin's catacombs. Let's get to see some fiery combat against some zombies. There is a staircase with bones all over it, and I think there's even a troll because, you know, it's Hogwarts. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, there's an adult who seems very upset with the students that are snooping around. Those kids are horribly behaved. Yeah. They are. They're rotten kids, always getting in trouble, visible maps. You need to listen to the adults. Like Trespassing. They can be expelled. It's yeah. been this way for <laughs> centuries, <laughs> apparently, in Hogwarts. Sure. They're always releasing something that's about wound roll. Like, what? If that happened, if the Hogwarts was in the States, they would be getting like sued constantly. They got like yeah. giants yeah, going around, mm -hmm. kids turning into, st into stone, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> unicorns, I don't know. <laughs> I wish there was a unicorn in Hogwarts. I think it's people have been really wanting this game. It's it's funny because most of the time you don't want to go to school. Like that's not a thing you're like, ah yeah, video yeah. games, time to go to school. But then you have like a game like Persona and a game like this where it's like, uh, maybe it's gonna have like a little little twist to it. It's gonna get a little bit little bit silly. I'm yeah. I'm curious about the, the structure of this because like, you know, the books are fairly thorough on like the architecture and the movies had to kind of take some liberties, but like, you know, games have to, they have to make a playable space. But again, it's, I don't know, I, I guess it's gonna be probably probably pretty big, probably pretty sprawling, you know? I mean, it yeah. has the potential to go huge. Like the more the more players, the longer they 
have content planned. I mean, it can it can be everything from, as you said, super small, very condensed, but it could be a huge, very mm -hmm. colorful universe for all kinds of players. And I'm very excited to see that. Like, I'm, I'm very excited to see the final product. True, there's a lot of uh, Harry Potter fans out there around the world, and I believe they're very excited. I believe I saw how they excited they are for this game because they have the chance to actually play as a Hogwarts student and actually use their magic. But it's not in real life, but in a game, and actually control uh, a student with the magic. So it, it will be interesting to see if this game actually going to blow up, but I believe it will just because of the base of the fans that they have around the world. Yeah, I know the fans are really excited for the game. It was recently delayed into next year. Yeah. I have to wait a little bit longer for it. Danny, do you consider yourself a, like a Harry Potter fan? Uh, I, uh, mm, I'm going to be that snob that's going to say, I love the books more. Sure, <laughs> well, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I think, I'm, I think I will play that game because it, basically I actually grew up on those books and I really want to see the interpretation of the game. And I really want to try some magic tricks, you know? Like I want to see <laughs> and to learn a little bit about the history yeah. of, of Hogwarts and Slytherin, as we saw uh, on the trailer. So it's going to be very interesting to see that. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to expect. So I haven't read the books. I've seen the movies. That's my, like, experience. So it's like, I don't... I, I, someone like me who's not, like, super invested in that world, I haven't gotten the hook yet to know mm -hmm. what's going to appeal to but me. come on, it's about magic. Yeah. I mean, sure, but if it's, like, bully with magic spells, I could get into that. Nah, I just okay, want a sure. cape and a wand. Come I mean, on, I just yeah. want a cape and a wand. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting because it's set before yeah. the Harry Potter, like, timeline. Exactly. You know? it's like, I think it's about Salazar, Slytherin, mm -hmm. like... So it's, I mean, it's, it's, we know some of what's happening around that time, but at the same time, like, I feel like there's going to be elements that maybe don't make sense. I, is like, uh, Hogsmeade going to be there? I, I mean, I don't know if they've announced this or not, but. There's many blank yeah. pages to fill. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. So I think this is why this game is actually coming, to actually fill those yeah. gaps that's actually missing for those fans. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very interesting to see it and to play that. Um, so yeah, I can't wait. I just want to know if Peeves the Poltergeist is going to be there. <laughs> That's like one of the, just they took that out of the movies and I'm like, I want to see that horrible flying man. Yeah. All right. Well, it is time for the <laughs> next award. Let's check in with our friends outside on the stage. Hello. Hello. We are back here. Now the next award is the best lineup, which, uh, what are the qualifications? Well, to be nominated for Best Lineup for Gamescom 2020 is uh, you just have to be an exhibitor at the Gamescom Entertainment Area. That qualifies you immediately, so anything goes. Pretty easy, right? Now, let's take a look at the winner. Oh, and it is Play On. Woohoo! Play On, I'm on that stage. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. Um, what can I say? Really impressed. We couldn't have done this without the teams of developers all across the world, from Brazil, the United Kingdom, and of course Ukraine, um, and of course the staff behind it that make it happen. And ultimately, you know, the game is that buy stuff. It's amazing, and I'm, you know, really proud. Thank you so much. You have plenty more time to talk with the guys inside, and congratulations again. Here's your applause. Back to the studio. Play On might not sound familiar, it's the publisher formerly known as Coach Media, and Play On certainly has an impressive slate of video games in the works. Here to accept the award for best lineup at Gamescom, Play On Games, congratulations. Thank you very much, yes, quite, quite a surprise, we're <laughs> very pleased. Yeah? yeah. So this is a horrible thing to do to somebody this, this far into Gamescom. Can you list the entire lineup off the top of your head? Uh, let me give it a go. Do I get a prize at the end if I do? Yeah. You just okay. got a prize. Got a prize. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, so System Shock, um, Floodland, Scars Above, Goat Simulator, I managed to say it right, uh, Gungrave Gore, uh, Dead Island 2, uh, God, I'm sure I've missed some. You're yes. trying to think of who's going to be mad at you if you miss one. Probably quite a lot of yeah. them, yes. Yeah. No, that's, that's yeah. right there is a really impressive lineup. And that's, mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people have been talking about Dead Island 2, which was a thing that people thought was dead. And now it's, you know, it's here. It's yes, just, ironically, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's back to life, it's yeah. ironically. <laughs> yeah, no, that seems to go really well. A lot of the press went and saw it. Um, you know, they, they, they liked it. And, um, yeah, I'm yeah. really pleased with, with, with the way it's gone on so far. It looks, it looks amazing. Yeah. And, and by the way, both sim simulator as well, it's like a huge hit, especially now you can play with your friends. So you can tell us a, bit, a little bit about that game and what happened in the... In the first of all, uh, what about the Goat Simulator 2? People seem to have gone absolutely, um, <laughs> absolutely bananas for this. Um, and everyone's been running around trying to blag the, uh, the goodie bags with the plastic udders and stuff like that. I think some of them have been thrown into the crowd for some lucky people. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, the whole Goat Simulator series surprised it out of nowhere. And it's just, I'm trying to think of a pun and I can't. It's too early, but yeah, it's done amazingly well. 
Yeah. I think that reveal is one of my favorites ever. First of all, skipping two, brilliant. But also the fact that it was just spoofing the Dead Island 2 trailer. And which, which <laughs> was the first thing I was like, are they working on that too? Is that going to come out? That was kind of a hint. How, whose idea was that? Who called whom? Well, well yeah. the funny thing was, I think they did it off their own bat. So it was, it was as much a surprise to some of the, team, the Dead Island team, I think it was, as it, as it was to us as well. And they absolutely smashed it. It's, it's amazing. And, and yeah. it's lovely to see some of these sort of nods to other genres. You know, other games do that as well. Sort of, um, yeah, more of that, please. What was it like to reintroduce Dead Island 2? It's a game that's been in development for a while. People have been waiting for it, weren't really sure what was going on with that. It must be nice to have that sort of out and, you know, looking yeah. forward to it again. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you, you saw the sort of people's reactions when it was on the, when the trailer got revealed and when we saw the press going in the room and coming out with big beaming smiles. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, we're very pleased. Great. And how does the fan react to the games? Let's say for Gungrave, uh, for example. Uh, Gungrave as well. That's uh, again, we've had people coming out with with huge big mm -hmm. smiles. We uh, we had a whole big press room set up with a gigantic coffin in the middle, covered with bullets. And I think you may have some cosplayers been running around as yeah, well doing great that. Game, by uh, the way. Yeah, and, um, yeah. Again, it seems to have gone really, really well. Lots of lots of very happy people having yeah, played. Yeah, very it. fun mechanics. The, the, like the movement is so like goes really easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a bit of ultra violence. We like that. <laughs> yeah, we love ultra violence. Now, Gungrave, <laughs> the, the series that ended a while ago. That's from it's 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 an older one, right? And it's the game is. Feels like it's really coming from like a kind of place of appreciation, like a real passion project. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, it's always it's always tricky when you've got sort of games that come back. Is at the same time saying it's true to the original, but still kind of keeping it fresh as well. You know, same with System Shock as well as another game of, yeah. of that ilk where you have that same sort of thing. That you know, if you make it too modern, then the sort of the old school fans go, oh, "What have you done to it?" But if you course make it too old, then then the next generation going, "Oh, it's just a reboot." So it's always a it's always a fine line to tread. But I think they've nailed it mm -hmm. both with Gungrave and with System Shock. No. So when you have a very big lineup like you do, how do you approach trying to diversify that? Are you looking for like to fill a broad variety of genres, make sure you have games available for every type of gamer? I mean, sometimes it feels a bit like herding cats, really, okay. that, that you've got so many <laughs> different sort of games out there that, yeah. that you, know, you want a wide, wide scope. And there is, you know, you think about the games that we've got. We've got shooters, we've got um, uh, city builders, you've got sort of, um, sort of Souls-like games as well. Um, it's really about sort of, you know, there's so many different sort of genres and, and tastes out there that you want to kind of cater for, for, for those, as many of those as possible. Um, but while at the same time, not, you know, you want to make sure that the stuff you're putting out is of really good quality, which is something that we're striving to do. True. This is why I think you actually won this prize because your lineup is sick and I believe that every fan here at Gamescom can find himself at the booth because there's a game for everybody. Yeah, there, there really is. Even I mean, a simulator of goats. So. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and the game that sort of surprised that we kept quiet was this Floodland, um, which obviously is one of the first games yeah. based on climate change, which is um, which is quite topical. It's the guys that used to do this War of Mine, so they've kind of got a history of, of taking real world situations and then making them in a way that without being preachy or horrible but trying to get people to actually understand what it's all about so, so they've done really well as well yeah I love that you can have that and, and goats like I, th <laughs> I have to say I think the goats would be a more optimistic look at things but you know I mean ultimately we'll end up needing goats at the end of the day yeah. so you know if all it's the machinery all about fails the jetpack you guys it's all about the jetpack that the goats has it's so much fun <laughs> I played it and it was hilarious with my Excellent. friends yeah is there a game in your lineup that's a personal favorite of yours that you're particularly looking forward to? System oh. Shock, because I'm yeah. old. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, I played the first one. Um, you know, I, you know I, I just love it. And I've done a few series. There's a cosplay going around of, of Showdown yeah. that is absolutely yeah. astounding. Um, yeah. I, I was going to ask about her because she she came on her stage. Yeah. yeah. Is she okay? That's like a lot of a lot, a lot of stuff. That was wearing. insane. I think the challenge is that because of the mask, it's quite hard to see. Yeah. So she has to get sort of guided around by handlers. But it is stunning. I mean, but you know, Warren Spector has been sort of. Uh, as, not on board on this because obviously it's a separate project but you've got to monitor it and he's, he's as happy with it as, as we are really so yeah I, I yeah. cannot wait to, to really get my teeth in that game and, yeah. and kick Shodan's ass like I should do yeah. <laughs> well congratulations again we're looking forward to Congrats. playing all these games lovely thanks a lot for having me cheers we're going to take a quick break but when we return we'll be handing out our final award of the show the Gamescom Awards will return right after this stick around Gamescom 2022 is presented by Samsung SSD, essential for gaming. Tune in to IGN1 for the latest news on your favorite releases, gameplay exclusives, and all the entertainment you can handle. And maybe even some you can't. 
Cinefix on IGN One, your friendly Friday night home for film fanaticism. Ha-ha! You're watching the Weekly Fix, ready to fill you in on anything you may have missed in the world of gaming and entertainment. Find it all in one place on IGN One. They turned into a network. Who knew? IGN Playlist is all of your games in one place. You can build your library and discover new games. Create and follow playlists from friends. Access guides for what you're playing. And rate and rank the games you love to share with the world. Available free with your IGN account. It's for players, no matter where you play. You're a busy gamer with plenty to play. Not a lot of downtime, but you still want to keep up with the latest gaming news? Fret not. No matter where you like to play, PC, PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, I've got the headlines you need to know about. When Half-Life 3 is announced, it'll be on the Daily Fix. When the Switch Pro is announced, you'll be the first to know. And when that big game you just can't wait for is delayed? Yeah, I'll have that news too. The Daily Fix, with me, Nars. Weekdays, only on IGN. If you're not following IGN on social media, what are you waiting for? We're constantly updating our feeds to bring you the latest news, gameplay, custom original content, memes, the best user-generated videos and art, and a whole lot more. Be part of the conversation throughout the year. Follow IGN on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat. Welcome back to the Gamescom Awards here on IGN Live. We've got Avid Awards for the best action game, the best multiplayer game, best RPG, so much more, but our next award might be our most important. The Heart of Gaming Award at Gamescom. Each and every Gamescom highlight is eligible for this award, not only games, add-ons, and technologies, but also people, institutions, companies, concepts, or terms. Let's take it to the stage for more. Thank you so much, Damon. Ooh. Yeah, I can't hear anything anymore. Can you hear anything? I uh, could barely hear you just now, but okay. that is how we want it. But it's all right. This is the final award, and the Heart of Gaming Award goes to the Game Industry Solidarity Campaigns for Ukraine. Yes, thank you, Stella. The support and solidarity shown by the game industry towards Ukraine has truly been impeccable. And uh, this last year has been difficult through and throughout. Um, this is why I believe that this has gained a significant rele relevance to all of us and uh, thus we want to present this award. Yes, uh, accepting the award will be the co-founder of GDB, Elena Lobova. Thank you so much for being here. Here's your award. for this award. It's a great honor for me to accept it on behalf of the entire gaming industry of Ukraine. First of all, I would like to thank, say thank you to each and every game developer, game designer and artist who is now fighting for us on the front lines, who joined IT Army, who is helping a lot of refugees. Thank you, IGN, and thank you to the entire international games community for supporting. It's really, really important for us in these tough times. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to take it back to the studio. Thank you so much for being here. And this has been the last <laughs> section for today. Thank you, Stella. This was Thank awesome. You, you guys. Amazing. All right. Thank you all so much. That about does it for the 2022 Gamescom Awards show. We had a lot of fun here today. Maybe not as much fun as everyone from the show floor. But again, huge congratulations to all the winners. Now, before we get to tomorrow, I believe we're going to have a discussion here. Is that right? That's right. Hi. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Hi. Thank you so much for having me here. So, yeah, I mean, video games are typically, yeah, they're, they're fantasy. They're escapism. And it's, I, it can be very easy to sort of hide your head on the sand when something real and horrible is happening. And it's been very nice to see kind of everyone come together and just, you know, support, support the Ukraine, support the fight, you know, and game developers there. 
Yeah, uh, that, that that really is like this. Uh, actually, when the war started on the first day, February 24, I received so many support messages from all around the world. It was so important for us uh, to get all of this support. And uh, we started doing a lot of volunteering from day one. And uh, many people, many game developers uh, supported fellow Ukrainians and provided housing for them, uh, donations, uh, help us spread awareness. And uh, I, I would, I just would like to say that every support matters to us, even if it's like, if it's like one euro donation, or uh, even if it's, uh, I don't know, just a kind word. How can uh, gamers and fans uh, support this cause right now? Okay, so. Uh, First of all, if there is such opportunity, of course, uh, provide support to Ukrainians who had to flee the country. There are a lot of them, many of them lost their houses, many of them uh, lost everything they had. So just find your local uh, volunteering initiatives uh, where you can bring something that people from Ukraine can use. Of course, if you have this opportunity, especially the big companies, I know they donate a lot of money and uh, this is what, what we need right now. But also, if, if you see the post about this, you can help us spread awareness about the cause. Every like, every click, every share helps us to keep it on top of the news. So the world know that it's still happening. And uh, uh, I, I noticed that Ukraine is not making headlines anymore. Uh, while the war is not only still happening, but it's getting worse and worse. So uh, even helping us spread awareness about this is already a big help. What would you say is the current state of the Ukrainian game development community? Uh, I would say that uh, Ukrainian game development community is as united as never before. Even though many of them had to flee country, but there are still a lot of companies that keep working no matter what. Uh, they work from the bomb shelters, they uh, sit in, in their homes during the air raid alarms, and, uh, but also there are a lot of developers who went to defend our country who joined uh, armed forces of Ukraine or territorial defense. These were just people like us, like game developers, designers, uh, programmers, and now they have to held guns. It, it, it's unbelievable. I think no one could expect this, but I really hope that, and I'm sure that uh, when the situation will get better, our game development industry will be as strong as never before. Well, I'm glad to see Gamescom recognize this very important issue. Thank you for so much for being here, and you know, best of luck with everything. Thank you, too. Thank you for having me. Okay, tomorrow we're going to have to do this all over again, but for the best cosplay here at Gamescom. Join us for the Gamescom Cosplay Contest, powered by Mick Delivery. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of costume characters roaming the show floor. We'll be showcasing the best of the best. Congratulations to all the winners today here at the Gamescom Awards. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.